ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله تركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك ولا ينتظم في سلكها إلا سالك اللهم صل وسلم وأنعم وأكرم وبارك على حبيبنا وشفيعنا وملاذنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه في الأولين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه في الآخرين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين يقول عز من قائل يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون اللهم اجعلنا منهم يا رب العالمين اللهم آمين In the name of Allah the gracious the merciful to him we belong and to him we shall return we ask Allah Jalla wa Ala in his infinite grace and boundless mercy to send an abundance of prayers and peace upon our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon us and to have mercy upon our families and to have mercy upon our community and to have mercy upon this world. We ask Allah jalla wa ala to bring relief to those who are in pain. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to safeguard those who need protection. And we ask Allah jalla wa ala to remove tyranny and oppression from the hearts of man. Allahumma ameen ya rabbil alameen. Brothers and sisters, as I was thinking about this khutbah and the message that I wanted to share, I found myself struggling to reconcile between many things. Last week we began to speak about the blessed days of Dhil Hijjah. And I mentioned last week that this week I would continue speaking as we prepare ourselves for the first of the 10 days of Dhil Hijjah which will start in the middle of next week. These are sacred days and blessed days. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Afdalu ayyamid dunya, the best days of the dunya are the first 10 days of Dhil Hijjah. But with that, and observing what is happening in our society, seeing the news out of Charlottesville, to see the resurgence, the unfortunate, sad, dark resurgence of Nazism and white supremacy walking in our streets, to see that now being multiplied in multiple spaces and preparing ourselves tomorrow that there will be similar protests here in Boston. May Allah protect our spaces and our cities. And then to see the desecration here in Boston of the Holocaust Memorial and to see how that pained so many of our brothers and sisters in the Jewish community. And then with all of that, we see what happens in Barcelona, Spain. Just yesterday and over the night, another incident had happened. All of this madness, all of this pain, all of this hurt, all of this darkness. And one really struggles to reconcile everything. And I was thinking to myself, how do I speak about Dhul Hijjah, but make it relevant to the particular circumstances that we find ourselves in as a society? And so, subhanAllah, I did what I do when I find myself struggling for words, struggling for meaning. I went to our beloved messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one who said, تَرَكْتُ فِيكُمْ مَا إِن تَمَسَّكْتُمْ بِهِ لَن تَضِلُّ بَعْدِ يَا أَبَدًا كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَالسُنَّةِ The one who said that, I left for you that which you are to hold, if you were to hold on to, you will never be led astray. The book of Allah in the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And with that spirit, I began to read and reflect and look and research. And subhanAllah, my eyes fell 
on one of the sermons our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam gave during the days of the Hijjah. And subhanallah, I read that sermon and I began to tear up. To say that subhanallah, truly our guidance, our clarity is found in the way of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam during the days of the Hijjah, specifically on the day of Nahr, during Hajj, he stood mukhatiban speaking to the companions. And he said, he asked them a series of questions. He said, Ayu yawmin hadha? What is this day? They said, Allahu wa rasuluhu a'lam. Hatta dhananna annahu sayusammihi bi ghayr ismihi. They replied by saying, only Allah and his messenger know what today is. To the extent that we thought that perhaps maybe the Prophet would change the name of this day because the companions, they knew the name of the day. They knew what that day was. But they had reached a point in their commitment to Allah and their following the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that even that which was so obvious perhaps may change. So they said only Allah knows what today is. So the Prophet sallallahu said, Alaysa yawmun nahr. Is it not the day of Nahr, the day of Eid? They said, Bala ya Rasulullah, surely it is. Wa ayyu shahrin hadha? And which month is this? The Prophet ﷺ asked. They said, Allahu wa Rasuluhu a'lam, only Allah and His Messenger know. He said, Alaysa dhul Hijjah? Alaysa dhul Hijjah? Is it not the month of dhul Hijjah? They said, Bala ya Rasulullah, surely it is. And then he said, Wa ayu baladin hadha? And which land is this that they were in? They said, Allahu wa Rasuluhu a'la. Only Allah and His Messenger know what this land is. He said, Alaysa al balad al haram? Is it not the sacred lands, i.e., of Mecca? They said, Bala ya Rasulullah, surely they are. Surely this is the sacred land. And so he said, in lieu of all of that, فَإِنَّ دِمَاءَكُمْ وَأَمْوَالَكُمْ وَأَعْرَاضَكُمْ حَرَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ كَحُرْمَةِ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا فِي شَهْرِكُمْ هَذَا فِي بَلَدِكُمْ هَذَا إِلَىٰ أَنْ تَلْقَوْنَ رَبَّكُمْ الله أَلَا قَدْ بَلَّغْتْ اللهم فَشْهَدْ اللهم صلِّ وسلِّم وبارك على حبيبنا محمد اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على من قد بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة. We send prayers and peace upon our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم who truly has relayed the message and truly has advised the people. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to the companions that your life, your wealth. And your honor is sacred just as this day is sacred, just as this month is sacred, and just as this land is sacred until you meet your Lord. And then he declared, Verily, I have relayed the message. Allahumma fashhad, O Allah, be my witness. And we today we say, We have received the message. We know what our obligations are. We know what the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. See, when we spoke about the sacredness of the days of the Hijjah last week, we mentioned how these days were the gathering point of all of the sacred rituals of worship in Islam. Salah, Hajj, Siyam, Sadaqah, all of them are gathered in this point. And so the Prophet is saying, and this is in his farewell pilgrimage, as he is communicating to the believers, he's saying, know that just as you understand the sacredness of worship, you must understand the sacredness of the human soul and of human life. That that is your obligation as a Muslim, and that is the message that he fervently declared that he has delivered. And he left Allah as his witness.
for that. And in that same season of Hajj, he spoke to the believers and he also made it evidently clear what a true Muslim is and what a true Mu'min is. As Imam al Nasai narrates, he says, Al Muslimu man salim al nas min lisanihi wa yadi. This is the narration of Imam al Nasai. Al Muslimu man salim al nas min lisanihi wa yadi. That the true Muslim is the one who people are safe from their tongue and their hand. That is the true Muslim. Wal-mu'min man aminahu nas ala dima'ihim wa amwalihim. And that the true believer is the one who people can trust with their life and their wealth. That the entirety of the manifestation of Islam and Iman in the life of the believer must be, must result in the safeguarding of the human being in the sanctity of the human soul. That is what it means to be a Muslim. That is what it means to be a mu'min. Our Iman and our Islam, pay attention to this, is not developed or cultivated at the expense of others. Our Islam and our Iman is not developed at the expense of others, but rather our Islam and our Iman is cultivated and developed to bring life to others. Wallahi al-Azim, this is the deen of Allah. This is our deen. These are not political slogans. These are not diplomatic words that are just shared for media sound bites to show that Muslims are nice people. That's not why we speak from the member of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But rather we speak to teach the deen of Allah as it was taught to us by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is the one who teaches us what a true Muslim and a true Mu'min is and must be in this dunya. That when you see, when you see the call of Jahiliyyah, because the Prophet ﷺ in that day, in Dhil Hijjah, he said, Today, Da'wa al Jahiliyyah Baatil. Da'wa al Jahiliyyah Baatil. That the call of ignorance. The call of ignorance, which was a call that did not care for the sanctity of human life. They did not care for the safeguarding of the human soul, or for the possessions of the human being, or for the dignity and honor of the human being. The Prophet said on that day, that call of Jahiliyyah is now rendered irrelevant and false and empty. There is a new day, a day of prophecy. A call to the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to the way of Isa alayhi salam and Ibrahim alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam, which was a call to human dignity. We have to internalize that our ubudiyya, our worship, our surrender to Allah is intimately tied to the dignity of humans around us. Why do we assume that from the essential purposes of our Sharia, our ulama from Imam al Juwaini, Imam al Ghazali, Imam ibn al Qayyim, Imam al Shatibi, all of their great scholars, when they spoke about maqasid al Sharia, the purposes of this Sharia of Allah, wa Sharia which has been maligned by political propagandists, mired in this empty, toxic rhetoric, but the true Sharia, the one that we know as Muslims. The, the purpose of it, from among the purposes of it, حفظ النفس وحفظ المال وحفظ العرض The preservation of the soul, the human being. The preservation of wealth. The preservation of dignity. This is the entire reason for the Sharia that Allah Jalla wa Ala has sent us. To preserve these in society. What does that tell you about the purpose or the role or the responsibility of a Muslim in this society that is unfortunately full? Not by this society, I don't mean just America, but this world that we live in that is unfortunately full of toxic, ugly, demonic rhetoric that does not care for the human soul. Allah Jalla wa Ala has made it that every human being 
has inherent dignity. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ Verily, we have dignified the son of Adam. Allah says in the Qur'an. And it is easier for Allah. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. Because we are in a hajj season. And millions of people from across the world will be heading towards the sacred sanctuary of Mecca to revolve around the Kaaba to fulfill the rites of hajj which is a lifelong journey for so many of us. May Allah grant us all hajj and mabrur. Millions will travel to, 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 to the hajj to fulfill that ritual. But know this, that it is ahwanu ala Allah to see, it is easier for Allah to see the destruction of the Kaaba than for Him to see the loss of one innocent life. And these are not my words. These are the words of Muhammad, our beloved messenger, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Then to see the destruction of the Kaaba is easier for Allah than to see the loss of one innocent life. That's why Allah Jalla wa ala in the Quran, He says, مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرِ نَفْسِ أَوْ فَسَادٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا أو أحياها جميع. That Allah Jalla wa ala in the Quran says that the person who kills one soul, one innocent soul, and sows corruption on the earth, it is as if he or she has killed all of humanity. And the person who brings life to one soul and preserves the earth from corruption, it is as if they have brought life to the entirety of humanity. This is the deen of Allah, brothers and sisters. It is a religion that seeks to preserve not only the human being, but to preserve the entirety of his creation. And that is at the, that is at the very essence of what it means to be a khalifa on this earth. Allah Jalla wa Ala speaking to the angels, he says, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُوا فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءُ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah says to the angels that verily I will place on this earth a khalifa. And they said, are you going to place on this earth those who will sow corruption and spill blood? He said, verily I know what you do not know. Allah Jalla wa Ala knows the human capacity. And he knows how the human being can cause evil. But he also knows that the human being can rise above the level of the angels. When they surrender to Allah. When they take the covenant from the likes of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because when you understand what it means to be a khalifa, you'll understand your true responsibility. A khalifa on the earth is a representative. A Khalifa on the earth is a steward. A Khalifa on this earth is a caretaker. Someone who stewards and takes care of Allah Jalla wa Ala's creation. A Khalifa is not someone who is a tyrant. He's not someone who seeks to sow corruption and spill blood. But rather, a representative of Allah is someone who seeks the wellness and the safeguarding of all of Allah Jalla wa Ala's creation. From the simple tree and plant, to the oceans, to the skies, to the earth, to the solar system, and to the human being. That it, what, that's what it means to be a representative of Allah on this earth. And that is the amana. That is the trust. Inna aradna al-amanata ala samawati wal ardi wal jibali fa abayna an yahmilnaha. That we presented the trust to the heavens and the earth and the mountains and they rejected to carry it, but the human being carries that amana. That is the amana, the trust that we hold dearly. And that's why it is so important for us to be good Muslims. Because the world is in need of people who surrender themselves sincerely to Allah Jalla wa Ala. That is what this world is in dire need of. People who understand the dignity of the human soul. 
people who understand the responsibility, the trust to protect and preserve Allah Jalla wa Ala's creation. But today, unfortunately, many of the ideologies and philosophies that are out there, they seek to do one thing, preserve the self. These ideologies of Nazis and white supremacists, or these the ideologies of extremists like ISIS and others, they seek to do something that is counter to the way of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. These people want to simply preserve their own egotistical self. That is a satanic impulse, by the way. That when you seek only to protect and preserve yourself, even if it comes at the expense of everyone else, that you don't mind exterminating and decimating and destroying everyone else, that is someone who is following in the way of the shaitan, Satan. Why do I say that? Go back to the beginning of creation. When Allah Jalla wa Ala fashioned Sayyidina Adam from teen, from dirt, and he placed him there, still as a shell, as a, as a mud shell, the angels were flowing through the, the jasad of Adam alayhi salam. And then Allah Jalla wa Ala breathed the sacred divine breath that brought life to Adam alayhi salam. And he commanded Iblis, Satan, Shaitan, he said, Usjud lahu, prostrate to him out of respect and honor, not out of worship. Fa'aba, Satan rejected. He said, what did he say? We all know it. Khalaqtani min nar, wa khalaqtahu min teen. You created me from fire, and you created him from dirt. How can someone who's created from fire bow down to someone who's created from dirt? The shaitan threw himself into la'nat Allah. He thrust himself into God's curse by rejecting to surrender to Allah, by rejecting to be humble, by rejecting to realize that just because you're made of fire does not make you special. Allah Jalla wa ala is the one who designates who is special and who is not. Not you, the shaitan. And so if there are people today in our societies who are going to walk around ascribing to themselves superiority, that they are the master race, or that they are the master people, and that others must be decimated because I want to preserve my egotistical self, that is the way of the shaitan. And that is not the way of any of the prophets of Allah Jalla wa Ala. We have to teach this message, brothers and sisters, because this is the message of our deen. Because those who seek to preserve themselves are people who worship themselves. What we seek is to preserve all of Allah's creation. And that makes us a people, bi idnihi wa bi fadlihi, who seek to preserve all of Allah's creation. Which means that we worship the creator of this entire creation. Kullukum min Adam. Our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in those days of Dhul Hijjah, he said, all of you are from Adam. And this was in his farewell pilgrimage. All of you are from Adam. And Adam is from dirt. لَا فَضْلَ لِعَرَبِيٍ عَلَىٰ أَعْجَمِي وَلَا لِأَسْوَدْ عَلَىٰ أَبْيَضْ وَلَا لِأَبْيَضْ عَلَىٰ أَسْوَدْ That there is no distinction of the Arab over the non-Arab or the black over the white, or the white over the black. All of you are equal in front of Allah. Inna akramakum indallahi atqaqum. The ones amongst you who are most dignified are the ones who have the most God consciousness. Because when you are conscious of Allah, the more you increase in your consciousness of Allah, your awareness of Allah in His manifest omnipotent power and dominion over all things, you realize that you are a speck on the spectrum of creation. That you're not special just because you are you, because you have a skin tone, or you have a certain color to your eye, or you have a certain look to your hair. But you are a speck in God's creation, and your only hope is that God dignifies you in this life and the next. And that is what we seek as Muslims, to be dignified in this dunya, 
to revive and to bring dignity to others, to safeguard the well-being of all Muslims and non-Muslims, atheists, it doesn't matter. Everyone is to be safeguarded by the Muslim and the Mu'min. And then we in truly internally realize what sacred ritual worship is about. Then when we're on that journey of humility, of surrender to Allah, we're beginning to understand the importance of the days of the Hijjah. That why we will commit ourselves in these coming 10 days of the Hijjah to surrender to Allah, to prostrate and bow down to Allah so that Allah views us as His true servants. And He uses us to fulfill the amana and the trust of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That we have to be people who live on this earth and push back against those toxic ideologies, whether they are coming from Muslims, non-Muslims, atheists, it doesn't matter. Idfa' billati hiya ahsan. Allah jalla wa ala commands us, push back with ihsan, with excellence. And pushing back with excellence, with ihsan, is to be vocal and to speak out when you see something that is ugly, that is qabih. When you see something that is ugly or qabih, whether it is from afar or from your own blood, from your own sibling or child or parent, when you see evil, you speak and you say, that is wrong. Unsur akhaka zaliman aw mazluma, the Prophet Sallallahu said. Bring victory to your brother, whether they are an oppressed person or they are oppressors. They said, Ya Rasulullah, we know how to bring victory to those who are oppressed. But how do we bring victory to those who are oppressors? He said, by restricting and holding back their hand from committing that oppression. That we have a responsibility to those misguided souls in this world. Those white nationalist people, Nazis, whoever they are, or people who listen to ISIS or follow that propaganda, it doesn't matter. We have an obligation to tell that entire spectrum of ideology, stop, don't do that. That is not what is pleasing to God. You can't be a good Christian, you can't be a good Jew, you can't be a good Muslim if you're conducting yourself that way. That is not the way of prophecy. These are the meanings, brothers and sisters, that the Prophet ﷺ imparted to us in his final pilgrimage, in the sacred days of the Hijjah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a people who take advantage of the sacred season of the Hijjah, who will commit themselves to submission and surrender to Allah, who will fulfill the ibadat that are pleasing to Allah, who will stay present conscious of him Jalla wa ala, in all of the days of the Hijjah and beyond. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring life to our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us true believers who will be elements that safeguard the well-being of all of the creation of Allah in this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to follow in the footsteps of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim tasliman kathira. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فيا فوز المستغفرين استغفر الله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا Brothers and sisters in closing I know when we hear so much bad news and we see so much that's happening and we see ugly tweets that makes the skin crawl talking about bullets with blood on them pig blood and I don't know what else we hear this ugly rhetoric, we see it on the news, we see the behavior of people all across the world, and sometimes it can become so suffocating. But the person who's committed to Allah is a person who never despairs. Never despairs. Allah Jalla wa Ala, when He speaks about those who despairs in the Quran, He speaks about a people who do not believe in Him. La yayasu min rawhi la illa al that those who have hopelessness 
in Allah, these are people who do not understand Allah. The believer should never be hopeless. The believer is someone who should be full of hope. The Muslim is the one who should be full of optimism. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam kana yuhibbu al-fa'l. He would love optimism. Be optimistic, be hopeful, be confident that Allah is the best of planners and that Allah knows exactly what he's doing. That nothing is ha operating outside of the knowledge of Allah or the will of Allah. But our obligation is to live in this dunya in a manner that is pleasing to Allah. To fulfill the obligations that Allah has obligated upon us. And to surrender our souls to Him. And to rely upon Him. Jalla wa ala. And when you find yourself in these moments, turn to Allah and invoke the name of Allah the way our beloved Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam did. If you recall the dua that I love the most, the dua that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, I've shared with you so many times, but I never get bored of sharing this dua, which was the dua that he made right after Ta'if, where everything around him was so dark, everyone had rejected him. He said, Allahumma inni ashku ilayka da'fa quwwati wa qillata hilati wa hawani ala nas. Oh Allah, I turn to you and I'm in this state of pain about what I have arrived at and how people neglect me and how I am weak amongst these people. إِلَى مَنْ تَكِرُنِي إِلَى بَعِيدٍ يَتَجَهَّمُنِي أَوْ إِلَى عَدُوٍ مَلَّكْتَهُ أَمْرِي To whom do you relinquish my affairs, Ya Allah? To someone who's distant and far who does not care about me or to an enemy who only seeks my demise. But what did the Prophet ﷺ say right after that? أَنْتَ رَبِّي وَأَنْتَ رَبُّ الْمُسْتَضْعَفِينَ وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ Oh Allah, you are my Lord, and you are the Lord of the weak, and you are the most merciful. إِن لَمْ يَكُمْ بِكَ غَضَبٌ عَلَيَّ فَلَا أُبَالِي Ya Allah, if you are not angry with me, then I do not worry. Brothers and sisters, do not worry. When you're with Allah, do not worry. When you prostrate your head to Allah, you have nothing to worry about. Do not fear. And that lack of fear, and that lack of worry, and that lack of anxiety is something that this world needs. This world is in need of bastions and beacons of light that are so carefree and worry-free and confident that it begins to touch every soul in the world. Because much of the anguish and anxiety you see today are people who are afraid, people who are scared. You see a lot of these people who chant and, and walk in the streets with their ugly flags and their ugly chants. The next day you watch them on a video clip crying saying, oh, I, I wasn't really with them, I'm just, I'm just kind of worried. It's false, it's empty, it's weak. The weakest people and the scaredest people, they are the ones who harm others. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Be confident. Be worry-free. Be trusting in Allah Jalla so that others in this world can feed off of your confidence and truly fulfill the message of a Muslim and a mu'min and that is to safeguard God's creation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us true Muslims and true mu'mins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fortify Islam, iman and ihsan in our hearts. May Allah jalla wa ala beautify this religion in our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who will take advantage of the blessed days of the hijjah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to use us for what is khair, to make us agents of goodness and agents of mercy the way our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was a mercy to mankind. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to quell the hearts of the misguided people in this earth, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, to an yaqbid ala qulubihim. Oh Allah, constrict their hearts away from that satanic impulse. We ask you, Ya Allah, to guide their hearts to righteousness and goodness and that which is pleasing to you. We ask you, Ya Allah, to have mercy upon this community, to have mercy upon this ummah, to relieve our brothers and sisters in Sierra Leone and all across the world from the hardships that they are experiencing right now, from Syria to Egypt to Libya to Iraq to Yemen to the subcontinent to Africa to 
our brothers and sisters in Burma, all across the world, Ya Allah, relieve their pains. And, and, and please, Ya Allah, extinguish, extinguish all of their anguish and their worry. Ya Allah, Ya Kareem, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Inna Allah, Ya Amuru Bil Adli, Wal Ihsani, Wa Ita'i Dhil Qurba, Wa Yanha Anil Fahshai, Wal Munkari, Wal Baghi, Ya Idukum La'allakum Tadakkaroon, Wa Nadhikru Allahi Akbar, Wallahu Ya'lamu Ma Tasma'oon.